Here we have a video card that came in for no power, and this one is the MSI RTX 3090 Trio. Customer mailed over the motherboard like this, and he wants it fixed. Let's read what the customer wrote. GPU had a water block setup. Everything was fine until a couple of days ago when computer would not turn on. Checked out continuity on board and appears to be a short in the main 12 volt rail. Nothing looks damaged or burnt that I can see. So the customer did some measurements and he noticed some short circuit on the board. We do not go by what the customer say. We do our own measurements. But on this board, we have three 12 volt connectors here. One, two, and three. So he probably measured at the fuse or at the coil or at the 12 volt pin and he noticed a short. So let's go ahead and see what's going on. And if indeed we do have a short. Let's start with the first connector right here. Uh, meter in continuity mode. Our 12 volt line or pin should be this one here on this video card. Sometimes it's this one, but the notch on this connector is from the back. So the 12 volt pin is this one. I'm reading 455 ohms, so we do not have a short here. And uh, we're going to get the same reading if we measure here or here or here or here or here or here. Okay, 455 ohms. We don't have a short. If we jump over to our second connector and we measure at the 12 volt pin, 436 ohms, same here, same here, and that tells us that our fuse is good because we are reading the same on here and here. And of course, we're going to get the same reading on the current sense resistor and at the coil, 437 ohms. And now if we measure at the third connector, and we do have a short. The customer is right. We do have a short. Short here, a short here, and of course, at our current sense, and coil, and doctor. We have a short. Let me just do a quick visual inspection. Right now, honestly, we do not need to check anything else because if we do not have 12 volts, we're not going to have 5 volts, we're not going to have 1.8 volts, we're not going to have VMAM, V-Core, so on and so forth. So it does not make sense to troubleshoot anything else on the board right now if we do not fix the 12 volt line first. But just a quick visual inspection, since the customer mentioned water block, I just want to see if there is any sign of corrosion or liquid on the board. And I think this is just thermal paste. I think. Yeah, it looks like thermal paste. And our problem may very well be one of those DR MOSFETs. We have some on the right and some on the left. We're going to have to find out. So I do not see any signs of liquid on the board. Water block does not mean liquid damage, but still, just a quick visual inspection. You see how we have more DR MOS chips on the left? And the short may be one of them left or right and if we go down to our PCIe slot let me just do quick measurements here our 12 volt slot rail 467 ohms good and then we're going to measure our 3.3 volts we have 485 ohms right now what I'm going to do is inject voltage at our shorted line here, whether it's at the current sense resistor or coil or the 12 volt pin or the fuse, anywhere I inject voltage is good. And we're gonna monitor the board under a thermal camera and see what gets hot. Hopefully we can pinpoint where the short is coming from. We are dealing with a very thick board, so heat may be very minimal. We have to keep our eyes open when looking at the thermal camera and try to see what is getting hot on the board, even if it's just a tiny minimal heat. And I've done this before where I showed you how heat was very minimal on one of the components. 
And if you do not have trained eyes, you're not going to be able to see it. I'm going to do 1.5 volts. Usually I start with 1.2, but for this one I'm going to do 1.5. It's a thick board. And let me grab the thermal camera. Right now we have our MOSFETs here, the line of MOSFETs. And we have another line of MOSFETs right over here. And basically we should be able to see the whole board by going back and forth. It's a big board. Our connectors are here, one, two, three. The short is coming from here. Okay, so right now I injected 1.5 volts and the meter is drawing 2.3 amps. And look at this. Short is coming from the last MOSFET. See? When I inject voltage, the MOSFET right over here. Let's go under the microscope. And it's this one right here. And that's the last MOSFET on the bottom. So that's most likely what is causing the short. And thank you very much, thermal camera. So let's go ahead and desolder the MOSFET. And right now we have to be careful because we have aluminum capacitors right here, right next to the MOSFET. And a lot of heat here can make this capacitor pop or blow. I have this heat sink here with a thermal pad under it. So I'm going to put it over the caps just to be on the safe side. And I'm going to use my goggles in case something popped. We're going to have to expose this MOSFET to a lot of heat to desolder it. The board is thick. And solder on this MOSFET will only liquefy when the board itself reaches melting temperature. I'm at 500 degrees Celsius. And the airspeed is at max. All right, out. Great. Let's wait until the board cools down a bit. And then we're going to measure again. Let's see if we still have a short. In the meantime, why don't we prep the pads? We're going to have to prep the pads anyway. Whether that's the cause of the short or not, we're going to have to solder that MOSFET back or replace the MOSFET. So it's a good idea to do it now because the board is still hot and solder will flow a lot easier. We're going to measure at the third connector here, or at the fuse, or at the current sense resistor, or at the inductor. Any one of them will do. Meter in concrete mode. And we still have a short. And the short is gone. We are now reading 387 ohms. If we go to diode mode, and we measure here, 0 0.39 voltage drop. 0 0.39, 0 0.39, 0 0.39, perfect. The short is gone. So the thermal camera was accurate on where the short was coming from. That's amazing. Let's go ahead and solder a replacement MOSFET. Uh, we're going to put the heat sink right over the caps here, right here. Right, now we're going to press and hold. Just like that. Awesome. And now we're going to desolder the axis from the sides here.
we did an amazing job. All right, we're done. All we have to do is try out the video card and hope for the best. And one more connector. All right, so we have all three cables plugged in, all three connectors, and I have the HDMI cable plugged in also, since I'm optimistic that this may actually work, but we're gonna have to find out. So let's go ahead and turn on the power supply. Okay, are we gonna see any lights on back of the cord? Yeah, we do see light, lights at the back of the card. We're going to have to see if the board, oh, chirping. The board chirped. When I say chirped, multiple beeps all at once. That's an indication that we may have bad memory or faulty GPU. Let's go ahead and measure our rails. We're going to start with 12 volts meter in voltage mode and uh, we're gonna put our ground probe right here and get a cup of coffee and start measuring right we have 12 volts at the first connector we have 12 volts at the second connector and the third one, we had a short, we replaced the MOSFET, and now we do have 12 volts on the third connector. If we check our 5 volt line, we should have two of them. I have not worked on the TRIA card before, but looking at the board, I believe this is a 5 volt line right here. And we do have 5 volts, and there's a coil on the bottom, 5 volts. So we do have two 5 volt rails here, present three 12 volt rails present. And if we check the PCIe 12 volts rail, right down on the bottom left, we do have 12 volts. What else? 1.8 volts could be this, or I do not know what this one is on the, on the top. Let me measure it. Zero volts. And we have one on the bottom. Oh, 1.8 volts. So the coil on the bottom is 1.8 volts. Present. What if we measure our memory? Memory should be this one on the top, the first coil on the top. And memory is showing up as 0 volts. 0 volts. V core will be 0, of course, right here. So we are missing memory. And, of course, V core. And GPU is not hot. GPU is cold. Let me turn off the power supply and turn back on. The GPU is burning hot. So it's getting hot and then it shuts itself down, probably because we do not have a heat sink on. So if we measure memory now, VMAM, zero. What if we turn the power supply off, then turn it back on and see if we get memory at any point in time? Right there, 1.3. Memory, 1.3, and then it goes down to zero. So it's coming on for a split second, then look at this, we get six beeps now, and not a chirp. Memory came on for a split second, 1.3 volts, and then it went back to zero. And now we got six beeps, which means there's something wrong with the cart. We did not get that chirp. I believe we may have a problem with memory or possibly the GPU. Let me measure resistance on memory, power supply off, and I'm going to measure resistance on memory. If resistance is short to ground or very low resistance, we may have a bad GPU. 
So resistance, look at this. Zero ohms. 0 0.3, but I know the meter is 0 0.3 ohms off. So 0 0.3 means 0 ohms. Zero ohm reading. So a dead short on memory is likely a GPU, a bad GPU. There's a 90% chance a zero ohm resistance on memory is a dead GPU. I was hoping to save this card. I was honestly hoping to save this card. We do have all 12 volt lines. We have both five volt lines. We have 1.8 volts, but memory is measuring zero ohm resistance. That short. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. And I'm gonna end the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions, and we'll do something else in the next video.